Hi, everybody, and welcome back to another chapter of Sri Nisugadatta Maharaja's I Am That. And uh, today we'll be looking at chapter 18. Actually, I'm just going to look at the last paragraph of chapter 18. And the title of chapter 18 is um, To Know What You Are, You Have to Know What You're Not. So there's always two ways to go about this process of seeking, investigating, self-inquiry, self-discovery, perhaps. So the questioner says, I am what I know myself to be. And Nisargadatta Maharaj says, <laughs> you cannot possibly say that you are what you think yourself to be. Your ideas about yourself change from day to day and from moment to moment. Your self-image is the most changeful thing you have. It is utterly vulnerable, at the mercy of a passerby. A bereavement, the loss of a job, an insult, and your image of yourself, which you call your person, changes deeply. To know what you are, you must first investigate and know what you are not. And to know what you are not, you must watch yourself carefully, rejecting all that does not necessarily go with the basic fact, I am. The ideas, I am born at a given place, at a given time, from my parents, and now I am so-and-so, living at, married to, father of, employed by, and so on, are not inherent in the sense I am. Are not inherent in the sense I am. Our usual attitude is of, I am this, or I am that. Separate consistently and perseveringly the I am from this or that, and try to feel what it means to be, just to be, without being this, without being that. All our habits go against it, and the task of fighting them is long and hard sometimes, but clear understanding helps a lot. The clearer you understand that on the level of the mind, you can be described in negative terms only, the quicker you will come to the end of your search and realize your limitless being. Your limitless being. <sighs> Nisargadatta, throughout this entire book, he tells us what we are. And of course, this is not just meant for us to believe. This is so much deeper than a belief. Because beliefs also change, sometimes very quickly. Just as he was saying, the self-image changes quickly. So it's not about a belief, but oof, let me tell you, some of these pointers are so good and clear that when you hear them, something explodes inside of you, an awakening, a realization, a great joy. So he says, realize your limitless being. Realize your limitless being. I love the beginning here. Your ideas about yourself change from day to day and from moment to moment. Your self-image is the most changeful thing you have. <laughs> that line right there, it's, it's right there. Your self-image is the most changeful thing you have. The self-image is unstable. The person is unstable. It's ever-changing. And if it is changing, can you really be it? 
Can you be that which changes? Or are you not that which is aware of that which is changing? So again, the more and more we pay attention to this changing pseudo-self, psychological self, consciousness, the more we see that changing element, we realize, ah, I am the awareness of that changing self-image. I am just, I'm just here. I'm just witnessing. I'm just watching. I must not be this changing self-image. Unless you really identify with that self-image. No, I am this self-image. This is who I am. I am this. I am that. And of course, there's nothing wrong. There are no problems in oneness. You are freedom itself. If you want to identify with this changing self-image, by all means. <laughs> By all means. Oneness can be limitless being, or oneness can be a very contracted, suffering individual person. Suffering and, and everything in between. Oneness can be whatever it wants. It is free. It is totally free. It is freedom itself. So it can, and it does, express itself in many, many ways. Look at the world. Look at humanity. Look at history. Oneness has appeared in so many interesting and diverse ways. And that's lovely. Sometimes it's been horrible. <laughs> but it's still oneness. It is the perfect expression of oneness. I said it's lovely or it's horrible. Of course, it's only the mind that judges the moment, that judges the expression of consciousness. But as Sailor Bob says and reminds us, what is wrong with this moment if you don't think about it? The mind has this ongoing commentary which I suppose in some sense is what I'm doing now. I'm, I'm giving commentary. <laughs> some of the commentary, of course, is helpful. Some of the commentary, uh, in AA, they call it stinking thinking, right? The mind, they say, can be a good tool, but not a very good master. And when we identify with that self-image, and if that self-image isn't so pretty, put together, it's not the way we want it to be. It can, and it does, create a lot of suffering. So ask yourself, who am I? What am I? Am I this person? Am I this self-image that's always changing? Maybe some of it you really will identify with. It resonates deeply with you. Yes, this part of me, this is who I am. And other parts, if you look at you, you think, hmm, actually, no, that's, that's not me anymore. I'm willing to let that go now. I can see that that wasn't really who I am. So this question, who am I? It can be used at all different levels of inquiry. As a person, who am I? As a self-image, who am I? As the Absolute Supreme Reality, who am I? As the Pada Brahman, who am I? As Consciousness, who am I? Ultimately, yes, we realize that there is no I. There is no little I inside. There's just the I of the Absolute, perhaps. There's just life and love expressing itself. Okay, thank you so much, Nisa Gadatta. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you again soon. Namaste.